Joining me now, Capitol Hill correspondent Ali Vitale, former U.S. attorney Barbara McQuaid, New York Times reporter Jeremy Peters, author of Insurgency, How Republicans Lost Their Party and Got Everything They Ever Wanted, and Tim Miller, writer-at-large at The Bulwark, and author of Why We Did It, a travelogue from the Republican Road to Hell. Ali, first of all, take us through what we can expect uh, this week from the hearings and how they might open up to testimony eventually from Steve Bannon. Well, look, they're open to hearing from Steve Bannon. It's his openness that's new, although there's a fair degree of skepticism within the committee for very obvious reasons, which is that Bannon has significantly changed his tune from even just a few weeks ago calling the committee irrelevant to now saying that because the former president waived executive privilege that didn't even necessarily apply, Bannon says he's now open to testifying. The committee certainly is open to that themselves, though they don't necessarily want to do it live and in public the way that Bannon is demanding. They do, though, have new testimony from Pat Cipollone that we're going to see incorporated in the hearings this week. More than eight hours of testimony from Cipollone speaking to key points of all of the different things that we've heard already in these hearings. And the important thing here, Andrea, according to Congresswoman Stephanie Murphy and others, is he didn't contradict any of the testimony that we've heard already from key witnesses like Cassidy Hutchinson. Listen. It provides us another perspective on what was happening in the White House in those weeks running up to January 6th that were so critically important. Did he confirm testimony that Cassidy Hutchinson gave? I think there was a lot of information that fit into this bigger puzzle that we're putting together. And we have different voices telling about the same meeting and, and more or less telling the same narrative. So, look, the committee is sort of selecting its words carefully here, Andrea, because you'll notice they're not saying that he confirmed Cassidy Hutchinson's account of several of the things that he said, for example, that they would be charged with every crime in the book if Trump went to the Hill on the 6th, or that if he didn't say more in the moment of the 6th, that they would have blood on their hands. But they are saying that he didn't contradict the prior testimony of people like Cassidy Hutchinson. That's important, as her testimony needed that bolstering. And to Jeremy Peters, there's a lot of risk for the committee with Steve Bannon after publicly admonishing him for refusing to testify uh, before handing down, you know, a contempt referral last year to justice. This is the eve of his trial on criminal contempt with very serious charges. And he's a showman, you know. He could really turn this thing, if it's a, just a public hearing and they don't know exactly what he's going to say, you know, he, he does talk radio all the time. He could turn this into a big publicity stunt. And since January 6th, Andrea, he has been one of the biggest promoters of the false notion that Trump somehow was cheated out of victory in 2020. So I don't know that the committee is going to get as much as they think out of Steve Bannon. Uh, one, one of the interesting things um, about Steve Bannon, as, as I learned, when I was reporting my book, is he was not always of the belief that the election was, in fact, stolen from President Trump. He thought, uh, going back to the, you know, the summer and early fall of 2020, that President Trump was going to lose. He told people he thought that President Trump, given how, how he mishandled the coronavirus, uh, was going to go down in history as one of the worst presidents in the pantheon of the American presidency. So if the January 6th committee were interested in getting real information out of Steve Bannon, they would probably want to try to pin him down on what he really said, what he really believed at, uh, during the time uh, that, that votes were being cast. He's completely changed his tune ever since because he has become uh, he, he, he sees a path to political viability, a path to uh, future Republican control in Congress and of the White House in perpetuating the notion that Trump was cheated. Now, I wouldn't get my hopes up for any type of testimony, public or not, from Bannon, because this all kind of has a, a deja vu feeling to me, at least. I think you saw Mark Meadows do the same thing. He was he was saying he was going to cooperate. At one point, he was providing documents. And then he suddenly pulled out, reversed himself, and refused to cooperate. We've seen this before. One thing Bannon is very good at is misdirection and obfuscation. And that may very well be what we're dealing with today. And Bob McQuaid, he's in the middle of this trial. Or uh, is the trial already started? 
I'm not sure of the exact schedule, whether it's tomorrow or today. But talk to us about the Justice Department handling this new agreement to testify. This does not in any way expunge his prior contempt. Absolutely right. This is a last-ditch gimmick to use as a defense at his trial. As recently as a week ago, he was moving for evidence in the court and, and to dismiss the case based on executive privilege. He doesn't want to testify. If he wanted to comply with the uh, committee's subpoena, he also would have offered to produce documents. This is an opportunity to give the jury something to confuse them by saying, look, he, 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 it wasn't until July that President Trump waived the privilege. He couldn't have complied if he wanted to. There is no privilege to waive. Even if there is privilege, Bannon is not subject to it. He violated the law nine months ago, not now. This is a gimmick. He does not want to testify. If I were the Justice Department, I would convict him at trial, and then I would subpoena him before the grand jury to talk about the bigger sedition crime. And then when he refuses there, I would grant him immunity and compel him to tell the truth. And, Tim Miller, if he really did testify, you know, fully, uh, which many people are skeptical about, You've recently pointed out just how much of a player he was uh, privately and publicly in the days leading up to the insurrection. He was part of that whole war room group at the Willard. Uh, it's a point Liz Cheney addressed during the committee's first primetime hearing. Let's listen to this. On the evening of January 5th, the president's close advisor, Steve Bannon, said this on his podcast. All hell is going to break loose tomorrow. Just understand this. All hell is going to break loose tomorrow. So, Tim, pick up on that. Yeah, this is the, the conflict here with the committee. You want him to testify, right? I think there's certainly things that he knows uh, based on his private meetings at the Willard that was happening with him and Rudy and others, who, you know, who were part of this January 6th plot. On the other hand, so much of this was out in the open. <laughs> you know, you just played uh, a quote from him on his podcast on January 5th. That continued uh, through his podcast on the day of January 6th and, and, and in the days that follow. As Jeremy pointed out, um, you know, in the last few months here, it, a year later, he is still the largest perpetuator of the lie uh, that led to the insurrection on January 6th. So, uh, you know, the, the committee needs to be careful here. Uh, you called him a showman, which I think was generous. Uh, he's a BS artist, right? You have to balance that, that the element of the fact that we already kind of know about Bannon's complicity in pushing this coup because he talked about it on his podcast, you know, with the fact that there is some additional information that is still trying to be, you know, figured out about, you know, what exactly was happening in that Willard war room, you know, who were they communicating with the Proud Boys, were they communicating with the people that, that, that stormed the Capitol, you know, was that as, was it a separate media arm? And I think that would be the, the information that would be the most valuable coming from Bannon. 